factories just got a robot with six arms that can do multiple jobs at once. In the UK, a humanoid learned to walk in only 48 hours. At MIT, a system can turn spoken requests into real objects you can touch. And in China, an AI traffic officer is already directing cars on public streets. None of this is a concept. These systems are being tested, deployed, and scaled right now. In this video, we will unpack what is actually new, what is marketing, and what these four stories reveal about where robotics is heading next. Quick reminder, if this kind of real-world robotics analysis is useful, hit like now, it helps the video reach more curious people around the world. Here is the big pattern. For decades, robots were either strong but locked inside cages or smart but fragile in research labs. Today, sensors are cheaper, simulation is faster, and AI is better at planning. That combination is pushing robots into real workplaces and real cities. Let us start in China. On December 5th at the Greater Bay Area New Economy Forum, Medea Group revealed a factory robot called Miro U. It has a humanoid head and torso, so it fits workstations designed for human height. But instead of two arms, it has six fully actuated bionic limbs. The goal is not to look human. The goal is output. The base design explains the strategy. Miro U rides on wheels, not legs. In a factory, wheels mean stability, faster movement, and fewer balance issues. On top of the chassis, it has a vertical lift so it can raise and lower its working height smoothly. It can also rotate in place a full 360 degrees. So it can spin, reach, lift, and swap tools without backing up. Medea's leadership said the value comes from moving past copying humans and focusing on efficiency. You can see that in how the limbs are used. Lower limbs handle heavy parts, lifting and positioning them with stability. Upper limbs handle finer tasks like fastening and precision assembly. The advantage is parallel work. While one limb holds a component, another can tighten, a third can bring a tool, and another can check alignment. The factory metric tied to this robot is changeover efficiency. Changeovers are the moments when a production line switches tasks, swaps tools, and resets processes. That is where time is lost and mistakes happen. Medea expects Miro U to improve changeover efficiency by around 30% once integrated. Even if the final number changes, the direction matters. Factories want flexibility, not just speed. The timeline is also telling. This robot is scheduled to enter a high-end washing machine factory for pilot testing by the end of the month. That is where hype meets reality, maintenance routines, safety protocols, worker trust, and daily throughput. One reason Miro U matters is that it treats the factory as a system, not a stage. A classic industrial arm is amazing at one repeated motion, but it depends on a fixed cell and fixed timing. When the product changes, people step in to bridge the gap. A multi-limb robot on wheels is closer to a roaming workstation. It can approach a station, hold parts steady, swap tools, and complete several steps in sequence without waiting for another machine. That is why changeovers are the headline. Flexibility is money. It also changes the labor conversation. In many places, factories are not replacing endless workers. They are struggling to hire enough people for tough shifts. Robots that handle heavy positioning and repetitive fastening can take the most exhausting part of the job. While humans focus on supervision, quality checks, and solving the weird problems that always show up. Now jump to the UK, where the story is about speed. A London-based company called Humanoid revealed its HMND-01 Alpha bipedal robot. And the headline is simple, it learned to walk only 48 hours after final assembly. In robotics, stable bipedal walking often takes weeks or months of tuning. So what changed? The answer is simulation. Humanoid relied on NVIDIA, Isaac Sim, and Isaac Lab to train locomotion in a virtual world through reinforcement learning. Instead of letting the real robot fall thousands of times, it learns in simulation much faster, then transfers that skill to the physical robot. By the time Alpha took its first steps, it already had an enormous amount of practice. Alpha is about human-sized, around 179 centimeters, and it is designed to carry around 15 kilograms. It has a wide range of joint motion, and its hands are modular. 
For some jobs, it can use more dexterous five-finger hands. For others, it can use simpler grippers. That matters because real deployments often value reliability over fancy hand tricks. This is also not their first platform. Humanoid built a wheeled mobile manipulator first, then reused major subsystems for the bipedal version. That pattern is becoming common. Wheels get to market faster because most warehouses and factories are flat and most objects are light. Legs become valuable later when you need stairs, clutter, and human-oriented spaces. With Alpha in the UK, the lesson is that software is starting to dominate the timeline. Hardware still matters, but training is becoming the part you can compress. When simulation is good enough, companies can test thousands of variations, different floor friction, different payloads, and different pushes, then pick the behavior that survives. Updates can arrive like software, not like a new machine, as long as safety rules are strict and testing is real. So far, we have two stories with the same lesson. Many useful robots do not need to copy humans. They need to fit into human spaces and deliver results. Now, the third story shifts from movement to creation. MIT researchers built what they call a speech-to-reality system. You speak what you want, and the system creates a real physical object within minutes. Not a picture, not a render, a fabricated item. In tests, it produced functional furniture like stools, chairs, shelves, and small tables. It also produced decorative shapes like a dog statue, showing it can handle more complex geometry. The pipeline is the key. Speech recognition turns words into text. A language model interprets intent and constraints like size and purpose. A 3D generative model proposes a structure. Geometric processing checks stability and manufacturability. Then robotic fabrication produces the object. This matters because it turns messy language into something that can actually be built. Why does this matter? Because it collapses the gap between an idea and a thing. Today, custom objects usually require CAD skills and time. A speech-based pipeline makes the interface natural. It could speed up prototyping, custom furniture, and small batch manufacturing, and it could let more people iterate on ideas without being expert designers. The MIT speech to reality idea points to a future where making a one-off object is as normal as printing a document. That could be huge for prototyping and accessibility, but it also needs guardrails. If anyone can speak an object into existence, the system must check stability, materials, and safe limits. So convenience does not create unsafe or wasteful output. Now let us put robotics on a real street. In Hangzhou, at an intersection in the Binjiang district, a humanoid traffic robot has started duty. It wears a fluorescent traffic police style uniform. It syncs with traffic lights and it uses clear hand gestures to guide drivers and pedestrians. It moves on omnidirectional wheels for precise positioning. It does more than wave. It can detect violations like helmet non-compliance and stopping over the line, then give polite reminders. Local officials said it was trained using real officer gestures and real intersection data. In other words, they are turning human experience into repeatable behavior that can run all day without fatigue. Public deployment raises different questions than factory deployment. Streets are noisy and unpredictable. Weather changes visibility. People do unexpected things. If a robot can work in that environment, even in a limited role, it suggests perception and decision systems are getting tougher. Authorities also plan upgrades, including large language models for voice interaction, which could let the robot answer root questions and give safety guidance. And the traffic robot highlights a softer form of automation, control plus communication. Public trust will decide whether it spreads. That means consistent rules, clear privacy policies, and behavior that feels helpful instead of threatening. So what do these four stories tell us together? Practicality is winning, wheels show up everywhere because they are reliable and safe. Simulation is becoming the fastest way to teach skills, turning months into days. Language is becoming a control layer for physical creation, shrinking the distance between ideas and objects. And robots are stepping into public spaces, which forces the technology to meet social expectations about safety and trust. The next phase will not be one robot that does everything. It will be specialized systems that do a narrow set of tasks very well, then scale through factories, service environments, and city infrastructure. 
The biggest change is the curve. When development time drops and deployments become normal, progress stops feeling like slow research and starts feeling like an industry. If you want more deep dives like this, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. It helps a lot, and it tells me you want more updates on the real robots that are already here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.